Hello, Lemonster. How are you? Welcome back. We've got another city scope coming up. I'm Jane. This is Jack. And this is Joe. The three J's <laughs> right here today on City Scope. Welcome back, Joe. You know, this is a, as I've always said, this is a place to be even when Jack is a little tired. Yeah. He told us he was. And, but <laughs> Aren't no, we all a little we, tired? We are, yeah, we, yeah, we are tired. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Jane. Thanks, sure. Jack, for having me sure. here. And it's great to be yeah. up here in Lemonster again. Yes, good, good. Lemonster. Lemonster. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're here. So what do you want to talk about today? Well, you know, something which is near and dear to my, my heart, and I'm hoping yours as well in, in this winter weather, even good winter weather, mm. uh, something a little bit less dramatic. How about pets taking pets. care of the okay. dogs and the cats that love us in our mm. lives? Mm -hmm. Big thing. Sure. You should. Sure. Yeah. Um, Americans have a lot of pets. Mm. I, I, my, yes. I gave you my stat page here. and. 37% of the households in the United States wow. have dogs, 70 million dogs. That's a lot of dog that, biscuits, Jack. Those are the ones they know about. That's right. That's what right. we get a the census on. Ones. Yeah. Yes. And yes. another 31% uh, of the U.S. households have cats. That's 70 more, 74 million more wow. of those fuzzy, warm-hearted, mm. four-legged friends. Uh, mm -hmm. They're out there, and you know, they, and we found. And I, those um, are all those crazy cat ladies that have the yeah, extra I know. four million cats. That's right. Cats. I know. And no cat boxes. They, <laughs> oh, they, they use the stove <laughs> and the couch. Who okay, was counting? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of them out there. We, we do love yeah. our pets. Right. Um, they're good for our mental health. They, uh, oh, definitely. I, yeah. They don't usually argue very much. They love us no matter mm -hmm. what we do. For they're the a lot of fun. Part. They are. Mm -hmm. They are fun. They really mm -hmm. are. They, and, and you can identify with them or you can ignore mm -hmm. them. And, the cats will definitely ignore you. Oh, sure, uh, very independent. Uh, they, yeah. Yeah. And the, and the yeah. dogs are different. But mm -hmm. they're a huge part of American households, mm -hmm. of our lifestyle, of our, of our filmology, of our commercial and marketing approach. Cat food, dog food, medications for these animals mm. are a huge, huge business. The insurance oh, yeah. companies are even getting <laughs> I knew you'd come up with animal right? health care. Yeah, they, oh, they, they, they have yeah. that. They yeah. have yeah. that. And I honestly know nothing about it. Right. And the FDA doesn't regulate it. Right. But um, yeah, it's right. true. It's out there. You can buy yeah. Yeah. Health care policies for your pets. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah. it comes in handy if you go to the vet and you find out that Price the procedure is going to cost you th two or three thousand dollars out of pocket. Out of pocket, yeah. right? It, it does. That's, that's mm. you know without insurance. Yeah. That's a follow-up program from whoever regulates, you know, pet insurance policies. Some people take better care of their pets than they do their kids. kids. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. The, I, and some and people's kids are their pets. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's a, it's, it's Let's a, have a kid. It's, it's a complex they When they should have gone out and had a dog. Well, right. they call them fur babies. That's right, fur babies, mm -hmm. fursons, you know, whatever the case might be. Yes. Uh, yeah, they're, they're there. They're a big, uh, big big footprint in the American scene. Mm -hmm. I, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to wax a little nostalgic here. Please. I know that Jack is a nostalgic, right. and a sensitive guy. I just keep thinking of To, to Kill a Mocking. <laughs> <laughs> that scene with the rabid dog when oh, yeah, Atticus yeah. had to shoot Atticus, it. Atticus, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. God, that's Gregory Peck in the movie, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 God, like it goes him. back away. Can't even read that in high school anymore. Oh, so my they're taking that. it out because right. it really? offends. Yeah, they, it oh, offends gee. people. Is Moby Dick censored too because of yeah. killing animals? Don't sense. give people any ideas. Right, mm -hmm. that's right. Oh, <laughs> you know, boy. The great white whale will drift yeah. away from our high school environments. Yeah. Yeah. But when I, when I, <laughs> I first started the FDA, I think a Grant was president or something like that. But oh, just before Grant, uh, they, they took he, us a, He's retired. He's, oh, yeah, he's not in government anymore. Bring him back. Um, uh, they gave us a tour of uh, a two-week uh, training session down in Rockville, Maryland. Oh. And we visited all the centers. And as I think I explained earlier, mm -hmm. everything that we, we regulate, the Center for Drugs has a center, the Center for Devices, Center for Foods. And we have a center for veterinary medicines called CVM. It's mm -hmm. part of the smallest center at FDA, really, really small. But real nice, uh, great people. Uh, it's, the policies are figured out for pet medications, uh, pet care, and, and all the regulations that we enforce to protect our pets are like made uh, largely mm -hmm. in those centers. And they keep a real, real focus on the need uh, to keep these animals safe. So the FDA is really concerned about foods that your entire audience give to their pets, as well mm -hmm. as medications, uh, and they're 
we're actively involved in, in taking care of these animals. I, I thought today's program could cover things like obesity, mm. which uh, do impact negatively on animals. Um, you know, proper foods to, to give animals and, and foods not to give animals. I know you bought chocolate the other night. I read that in the newspaper. Uh, and I, that, that should never go to dogs. No. Uh, well, do you know what the reason behind that is? What does it do to them? Yeah, you know, I have no clue. I don't know. But it's just ne that and macadamia nuts and, oh. and like raisins and currants and garlic and chives. Just certain foods that you can't give to your animals. I do believe it's partly because they don't metabolize them the same way. say like a gut reaction. Or yeah, something with the gut. literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah literally. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Wow. Um, so they just don't metabolize a lot of these okay. foods like we do. I mean, who is not prone to, you know, at Thanksgiving dinner to take a piece of, you know, turkey and shift it under the table and give mm. spot or fluffy right. or who, and, and that's, you know, that's a, that's good occasion. You can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you just have to watch out. Right. Know, no currants or raisins or no chocolate. Okay. Uh, you just have to just be careful in some cases yeah. like that. Um, you know, some pets are, are trash trash bucket raiders. I have mm. a, had a couple cats that used to hit the trash can all the time. Mm -hmm. and if you've got bad food that's decaying in there, mm. that's not good for them. No. Um, we have to be their best advocates uh, for, for health. You mentioned a great point there earlier, Jack. It can get awfully expensive to visit the vet. <laughs> it ain't a cheap adventure right. to bring spot to see the vet. Well, I think it's important if you are going to get a pet, just be aware of all the responsibilities you're going to have. I mean, you have to be able to be there for them, get them outside to do their thing, and yeah. feed them the right things at the right time, and not feed them too much, you know, moderation. But I don't think if you're not ready to have a pet, if you can't afford to have a pet, maybe you should rethink that. Yeah, and we, we're at the time of year this year yeah. where there's going to be a lot of oh, they'll be there. homeless ducklings right. and homeless little yeah. cute baby right. chicks that right. people get for and Easter those kids presents. Are great. No bunnies. Yeah. Don't no. get a bunny. <laughs> bunnies. <laughs> for, yeah. Unless you really and know what up, you're doing with you know, a bunny. They end up, bunnies. God knows where they end up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. You know. uh, Jane brings a sense, a sense of mature rationale <laughs> oh, to these that? conversations, doesn't she? About knowing how to take care yeah. and, and be aware you of what it. an animal needs. Yeah. Right. Huge responsibility. Yeah. Financially, emotionally. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you get tons of these little new kittens bopping around and they're bouncing off the walls. Yeah, but then kittens turn into cats. Yeah, and they're and then and then they like adopt you or just ignore right. you. Right, one right. or the other. Yeah, that's a real big thing. Be aware of the do's and don'ts for the animals that you bring into the house. Um, one, we were talking about food a moment ago. Obesity for people mm. is a major concern. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the same thing for pets. Mm. A lot of the problems that we have, if we're obese adults, the Walmart crowd maybe, uh, but a lot of those issues can be passed on to pets. You have mm. a heavy cat, a heavy dog, you've got high blood pressure issues, oh, yeah. you've got diabetes, you've got bone structure problems, respiratory and, and cardiovascular mm. problems. Mm. They suffer a lot of the issues that we do. That's right. why, once again, segueing back to your wise words, be aware of the care required uh, to maintain a pet mm -hmm. and be really willing to commit yourself to it. It's a really, really big thing. And I thing. think also depending on the living situation that you're in, if you're in a small apartment, you know, it might, you might want to rethink getting a big dog. That, <laughs> how much space are they going to have in there? I mean, I guess you could. What does a great Dane really need? I don't know. <laughs> Seven I mean, <laughs> well, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. But you know what yeah. I'm oh, saying. True. I'm yeah. not necessarily, I'm not dissing anybody that wants to get a really big dog. Sure. I'm just saying, uh, as far as space goes, um, I think, you know, if you're on a farm, great. They can go out, run around. That's you own the, seven that's the acres, best, you're all that's set. That's the best situation, and, and you know? dogs, right? I don't know about cats, become, like, fashionable at times. <laughs> that's true. Um, they do. You know, you got <laughs> they do. Pit bulls seem to be big uh, now. Oh, and yes. And bull mastiffs. And I don't know mm. if it's, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't want to get into the Freudian uh, uh, right. analysis of it, but um, I think it adds to someone's masculinity when they have mm. these dogs that are perceived as tough dogs. Mm. Right. Um, you know, a dog. Right. You see a lot of pit bulls going around you with do. guys mm. that are walking around yeah. like this and bull mastiffs. It's like, what do you need a dog that's basically, you know, 
Yeah, they're cute and everything. Can but massacre the neighbor yeah, in 15 they, minutes. <laughs> sometimes right. they could destroy well, another little dog that walks by. That's true, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so I'm curious, are they actually, in, is that in them to do that, or are they kind of bred every, for that? Everyone says I, that Because I have a lot of it's, women it's, out there are like, you ought to love your pity, love yeah, your pity. Oh, the pit bulls, they're not that it's bad, in, they're wonderful. It's in the way you so, raise them, so right, to speak. Right, yeah. But I've had encounters with pit bulls that were wonderful dogs sure, sure. that were raised perfectly yes. around kids, you, yep. the best dog in the world, mm. but walking my dog by them. Mm. And like Beagle okay. got attacked a couple right. times by okay. the same dog. Oh, really? Just walk, mm. oh, but the dog right. was wonderful around kids. Awesome. It's like, right. what do you do? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I don't know if it's a territory thing, if it's their... Mm. their you know, their instinct, and right. I know that this one would get jealous if mm. its owner stooped over to pat my dog. Okay. The dog would go nuts right. Really? Yeah, right, and right. attack my dog. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, and when they attack, it's not just a little, uh, Oh, they don't they, take prisoners. Yeah. They grab on. Right, yeah. they yeah. get strength. And they just, right. you know, Did, so I, yeah. I don't like pit bulls because of that. Did your beagle so, oh, survived all the incidents? Got cut up a couple times. It well, mm. can't be fun. Yeah. And this is like yeah. with a neighbor, so what do you do? Oh, it's hard. You it's know? diplomatically mm. it's difficult mm -hmm. to deal with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. In your own yard, too. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. I think, I, you, I you, think know. you can defend yourself yeah. and your dog with a weapon in your yard. I believe well, you can. Or... Try defending a, somebody wow. that breaks into your house in your own home <laughs> yeah. with a weapon. Yeah, nowadays. good luck there, too. America is mm -hmm. a fun place. Yeah, guys. it's wonderful. Cities, cities go brings that right into oh focus. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I see a lot of like the the small claims court. You know, you watch it on TV and you see, oh my dog, this dog, and then we were walking and that dog went and got out of the house, and then all of a yeah. sudden it's like they're in court about a, you know, an animal that's just doing its thing, but yeah. the people have to be responsible for it, and this guy's suing this guy because he ran into his yard and ate his chicken or whatever. I, don't know. <laughs> no, I, I mean, it's. It's complicated. I've been, yeah. a, I've been a dog owner for a while, right. and I'm noticing a lot more cancers. Hmm. You know, almost like in people nowadays, there seems mm. to be a hell of a mm. lot more cancers out there. Right. Um, I just had a beagle that died of cancer. A friend of mine had a dog that had cancer. Um, I was talking to a, another guy the other day who had a couple of golden retrievers mm. that both got cancer. Okay. and. I mean, I don't remember Spot, which was like one of my dogs when I was mm. a kid. Right. And Goldie, who was my cousin's dog, mm -hmm. or, you know, Rufus across the street. <laughs> Not Rufus. Ever having Rufus. cancer back yeah. then. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. cancer is. Well, veterinary medicine has come a long way, yeah. and, mm. and more people bring more of their pets to see vets than a legitimate, you know, need to diagnose um, uh, requirement. And we just mentioned the millions of dogs and cats. Probably just everything gets bigger and better, or mm. bigger and more, and and with that. Be it comes a lot more exposure to the illnesses and ailments that impact on your pets. Mm -hmm. They they have a higher profile than they they did when we were kids. They really do. Um, I'm thinking that's part of the process. Do you think like how you modify you know like breeding and now there's all these you got to combine this dog with this dog right. and now you get this thing. Yeah. Is that does that compromise their integrity from, or their you know, immune? I I, I wouldn't you know I wouldn't I mean? doubt that the people that I've talked to do have yeah. you know different high level you know dogs that have a very narrow you know family tree you might say mm. because mm. of the breeding of them mm. do have a shortage of lifespan and mm. i think some illnesses that just pop up from mm. lack of diversity yeah, in kind genetic of like coding. When the egyptians used right. to interbreed yeah i know oh, i mean what happened there i, I mean, mean welcome to the nile uh, they all walked I can, around like Cut. i can i can remember those guys yeah <laughs> yeah i know well, richard the third <laughs> oh, yeah. People like that. Yeah, um, It's so. true. It's mm. true. Uh, another thing which may surprise all of us: raw meat sometimes hmm. we think is a is a favorite treat, when, especially when it comes to pit bulls and beagles. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Uh, raw meat is not always uh, the best thing to give to a, to a pet, a dog, for example. E. coli, <laughs> salmonella, mm. all the foodborne illnesses mm -hmm. that we get can also be transmitted to infected and unclean, unwashed meat. A little mm. cooking goes a long ways for all species and no, breeds. Yeah. It really does. I, would, I, would, I was always under the impression that the dog's digestive system was like, 
the acid in their stomach was just so much stronger than ours that hmm. a lot of those things like E. coli from raw meat would just get hmm. yeah. Yeah. wiped out. You know, I don't know that, Jack, yeah. but I've heard the same thing. And yeah. I look at some of the things my cats eat. I have a cat that eats plastic. Yeah. I wonder about that yeah. on the dietary chain. Of course, yeah. you see it on the kitchen floor in the morning the yeah. next day. Right. But you got to wonder what this cat is thinking. Why are they chewing on you know, that? Yeah. You know, why are the garbage bags so appealing uh, to them? Uh, I don't know. It, it is or they, do dogs that eat their own right. feces. Yeah, I know. Right. That's, that's yeah. just a dumb dog, ain't it? Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> or, or another animal. It's like, I know I, I dogs know. that are, they eat in round horses, and it's yep. like, you don't have to feed the dog because he's just going to eat the horse <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, ooh. That's, yeah. that's redistribution. Oh, let's, let's, Save let's, money let's get, on that. Yeah, let's yeah. get some good Think dog food it. in there for this poor thing. <laughs> Send the dog. You know? What? We've always let really? our dog, you know, after people are over the house and the kids are. <laughs> Dropping food everywhere. It's like, you're going to vacuum the floor? Oh, no, just let the let dog. Let the dog, yeah. right. Let's yeah. Yeah. take care of that one. Yeah, it's, um, they're a challenge. They're, they're definitely a challenge. And to be to be on top of their care is, is really paramount. Mm. Um, the things like salt intake, I just noticed mm. that. Salty snacks mm. are always part of everybody's diet. And they're mm. OK, but once again, provide water for your pet. Yeah, There's, water, yeah. very important. Yeah, especially think, right? with, with the oncoming warm weather sooner yes. or later, yes, uh, yes, you're yes. going to have to do that. Um, another thing we advocate for everybody mm. Is to have a vet, or at least to have a contact to a veterinary clinic. It's really, mm. really an important thing. Have those names, have those numbers real close, uh, and also re remember the vaccination requirements for your pets. Mm. Uh, vaccinations can be pricey. Uh, mm. There's no doubt about it. They can take up time, um, but once again, it's probably better to do it for your pet's health and well-being, mm -hmm. their own mental health and emotional stability, and of course, you know, f for their longevity to maintain at least a semblance of, of the proper vaccination schedule for all of your pets. I mean, the medications are of course, you know, involved with the FDA's approval process. Uh, they're, they're safe and effective. Um, so it's, it's a good thing to now, follow. Now, fleas and fleas. ticks are also a problem. Big mm. problem. And flea medication Okay, can have some severe effects on certain dogs. I live in I mean, fear of that for my and cats. If, and if I really do. Read, always have. Yeah. If you read the labels yeah. of some of the over the counter, mm -hmm. um, like flea shampoos, yeah. flea medication, there's a ton there of is. side effects. Oh, that's and dramatic. they're severe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, like, is there a process that the FDA utilizes, like they do when like, like uh, clinical drug, trials yeah, with yeah. pet? Eva evaluation and research is always a part, a yeah. part of developing any medication for you know for for the for the species. Um, you're right. I am always very leery about giving flea medications to my cats. They're, they're great guys, and I've had adverse reactions. I'm sure we all have. Whenever I, I administer a flea medication to a pet. I do it in the morning, usually on a weekday when a vet clinic is open with the number relatively close hmm. and watch and wait for a while to see what happens. But once again, there's mm. a trade-off here. I mean, mm. it's, it's, you're darn, darn, well, damned if you do, damned if you don't mm. sometimes. Um, you just have to wonder that, you know, fleas can be dreadfully dangerous to, to animals. There's no doubt about it. But so can the medications seem to have a little bit of a threat effect too. Mm. So you, you just have to make an educated guess in a complicated lifestyle that Americans uh, lead. Well, I'm wondering if something do. more natural, like a natural oil or something. Diatomaceous would, would... earth. <laughs> sure. Is that for a swimming pool? <laughs> well, you, they have food grade and they have filter grade. Okay. Mm. Food grade diatomaceous it's... earth. Right. Um, and you know, the only thing you have to watch out is it's a really fine powder, not to inhale it yourself. But it's, you know, it's hot. It's not because actually clay, what I've learned. No, it's, it's, it's from diatoms, which were little sea yeah. creatures. That's right, right. way back. Right. Right. Of years yeah. Yeah, yeah. ago. When the, when the Egyptians were around having yes. issues, yeah. But mm. their shell mm. is the like, shell. like hard like a diamond, and they have like, it's almost like crystalline, so really? there's real sharp edges in it. Like a, for any kind of a bug, a cockroach, if you put it on your right. floor, right, right. fleas, ticks, if it comes in contact with their exoskeleton, right, yeah, mm -hmm. it breaks it and they can't live with the diatomaceous earth. Oh, that's so look 
for your cats, your little kitty cats, right. if you want something I, less toxic take than, a the, note. than yeah. the yeah. FDA approved flea shampoo, right, which you can right. look into diet, food grade diatomaceous earth. And mm -hmm. Just and my you, little hint for the day. It's a great thing. Okay. And you mentioned something about uh, herbal products. Well, I was thinking, I don't know, how, and I, don't, I know I, I've, I've used this on myself, Yeah. human. Okay. But I don't know about like cat, like t like a tea tree oil or something. Oh, like sure, that. I'm familiar with that. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, I'd rather go with something that's maybe a little more natural before I dive into right. the more chemical chemicals. Yeah. With all the list, I don't know, and yeah. just see how that is. But again, I don't know what that would be like for a cat or a dog. I don't, don't know how know. they react yeah. to it. Diatomaceous earth can also be a natural, um, like what's the word? It starts with a V, but a worm, a worm preventative oh. too. Oh because it actually can kill intestinal parasites the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, you mix it a little bit with their food. Um, matter of fact, a lot of chicken food has diatomaceous earth. earth in it. And mm -hmm. chickens also, you know, for mites and everything, they take dust, dust baths. Mm -hmm. yes. You can put yeah. a little yes. of that on your chickens, yeah. too, because I have chickens mm -hmm. also. Right, right. Oh, yeah, um, the chickens like that. So, I mean, yeah. there's lots of natural things out there, actually things that used to be used years ago, um, you know, when farming was a staple, right. when people right. relied That's on animals, mm -hmm. you know, as part of their right. livelihood. Right. And, and Not just a cute little thing right. in a basket, yeah. Yeah. but like out there and reeling in the sheep and stuff. Right. Yeah. Versus like, Making you know, money on the farm right. calling the vet yeah. all the time, you know, when you get a breech birth going with your oh. favorite right. cow or right. horse, cow. Right. then right. you bring the vet in. Right. But then the vet would work for apple pie. Yeah. Yeah. You would have yeah. a quarter milk yeah. or whatever the case was. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good points. Hey, one more one, yes, one more yes. animal point yes, if I can yes. make this. I, and I almost forgot this. Bone treats. Um, those came out a while back. They're, uh, mm. they're, they're not really bones. I guess they're treats. But they've uh, we had some real issues with it. Lots of reports on uh, dogs chewing up those crunchy bone treats that you see at the uh, the the, hmm. the pet stores or the, the, the retail right. stores, and the item breaking apart in their throat, causing lacerations Ooh. in their esophagus or oh, mouth. Uh, they're hard to digest. They can cause, choke, cause choking, vomiting. So I'd really recommend that you talk to your vet if you have a dog hmm. and you want to treat it with a, a you know a bone treat. I'd probably stay away from that. Is that the more like the chewy ones? Yeah, okay. yeah, and they, yeah. they just tend to fracture and frag yeah. fragment, and they're just they've been really dangerous. With lots of adverse reaction reports mm. on those, which is, is never a very good thing, it never is. You know, you're talking about raw meat. I'm wondering, you know, if somebody orders, you know, like a, 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 a cat, you know, going and getting a, a piece of cow to freeze it, you know, mm. like not just going yeah. to the market, but yeah. actually going yeah. and getting just stored yeah. in your Spider freezer. Beef. Yeah, I aware of that. Like something like that would be maybe better than just you don't know what you're getting when you go to the market and they're in the back room doing their thing. Right. Maybe something that's more organic. Yeah, a little more control. Even if it yeah. would be raw, or is it just raw meat? Don't even go there. Kind well, of it's that's that's. I don't know if I if I can, yeah. I can legitimately answer that one right. correctly. No, I know. Um, it, once again, Just throwing it out there. Well, it's it's good. It's good to think. <laughs> you know? um, I I think the pet owner once again is the advocate. Yes. Um, raw meat, if 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 not properly refrigerated, properly mm. looked after, or you don't know the sources, could have all sorts of question marks yep. coming with the pleasure. Mm. Uh, and, and salmonella, uh, E. coli, right. not good for us, and surely not good for the, right. for the local cat or local dog as well. I, want, I have a friend who, um, he actually uh, makes his dog's meals. He, make, he gets a big pan, heavy pan, yeah buys all the ingredients, oh, cool. makes like a stir fry kind of, and mixes it yeah, all up. He's got real control over what's right. going on. Right, and yeah. he does, you know, it's all good stuff, and he puts it in containers, and this is my dog, you know, the dog loves it. Monday to Saturday. Right, <laughs> you know, so, I don't know, I like that idea of like, that way you really do have control do. over what you're Right. Putting in there and, and what the you're quality doing. is there too, right. and the right. care is there too. I mean, but that takes an effort. It's easier there's, to just open a bag and good dog food out there. And, you know, there's right. good dog right. food out there, and there's cheap and dog there's, food right, out there. Right, that, right. So you you, know, yeah. you do your research, and as a matter of fact, if you spend a few more bucks and buy the good dog food, right. you don't have to feed them as much because they're getting their nutrients well, and a le right. less, right. which yeah. also helps you down the line when you're cleaning up the. Mm. 
because you don't have a lot of right and it's such nice well form. formed easy to pick yeah. up yeah. and right. smaller because they're eating right. less right. but they're still getting the nutrients yep. yeah. so you got to do yeah. your yeah. research you do yeah. it's a huge thing your, right oh yeah that, with any pet i mean but we, to feed a dog cumin right. food regularly this guy must love the smell of dog farts <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> Because, yeah, like he's saying, yeah. they, the digestive systems yeah. are different. Right. Different no, guys. and I'm sure it, whatever meat he purchases yeah. or what have, and I think he adds some grains yeah. in there as well. I don't know. I know I can't speak for him, but right. I've seen him. He's like, I'm making my dog his dog food. And That's so a nice I'm thing. I'm hoping though. that he's yeah. done his research. Sure. And that the you know it's not just you know human food, but it's, it's right. It, it, all kinds of stuff mixed right, in, a little yeah. chicken, a little meat, whatever. So it, it, it whatever. gives you, it gives you a sense rather. of perspective and a sense yeah. of caring, yeah. and it, it's it's just good for the human soul mm -hmm. to reach out, whether it's to other people or to, to animals, and care for them. It mm -hmm. gives you a bit of a mission in life. Mm -hmm. I wake up every morning before I go to work, and I feed the pet cats, and there's a bunch of them. Uh, I'm not the the cat guy of Baker Street, but there's <laughs> I, I have a bunch of cats, and mm -hmm. and and they're cool about it. You know, they're not mm -hmm. kids; they're animals. And they they know what they're getting, and you know, so if it's McDonald's, whatever, no, uh, yeah. and, and they're really cool about that. It makes me feel good about things, so it's, it's just just works. Right. Um, one last thing: the yes. flu season is still here. It's mm. been a rough flu season. Um, I, I uh, once again, I, I understand perspective that, that Jack and you both have on mm. the flu medication. Uh, it's strains have have uh, changed since the mm. adaption uh, of the the uh, vaccine last year, right. and. It, that happens. That happens periodically. Have your viewers go on flu.gov for guidance and mm. concern. Uh, still not too late to get your flu shot. I recommend it. Um, and just check on how we're handling this and how it's going. And I got a question, and I'm going to be very discreet. You always are. Okay. <laughs> Why would the government get involved with the marketing campaign of flu shots? Because I see it as nothing but a huge marketing campaign. Right, right. It was 17% 17, 17 effective this year. So that leaves you with what? 83% non-effective, okay? You can check your statistics. Maybe I'm a couple... I've, I've, got, couple, 30, I've couple, got 36 here. Okay. I was going to mention that, by the okay. way. 36%, so that still leaves uh, three quarters yep. or two-thirds non-effective, okay? Granted, you want to get a flu shot, you get a flu shot. Sure. But to have it marketed on every page of every uh, magazine that you buy where there's any pharmaceutical input, to, to see it on your prescription for high blood pressure at the bottom, get your flu shot. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a marketing campaign, mm -hmm. Joe, okay? I haven't had a flu shot in 40 years, and maybe more, because the last time I went, my parents forced me to go when I was a little kid. And I've yet to have the flu, okay? Good my daughter, who they said was gonna die because she had the flu, she had it three years ago, okay? hasn't had the flu since, knock on wood. When she had the flu, legitimately, they pushed Tamiflu, okay? Remember, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right? Why is the government getting involved with, with a marketing campaign by the huge pharmaceutical companies? The fact that people are getting less flu shots made the advertising campaign 10 times more this year than I've ever seen it. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna continue, okay? If you got your flu shot, and you still might get the flu, but you're going to have less symptoms. How the hell do they know? We get a cut. I think we're running out of time. I, I just have to know why, no is the to government, <laughs> why is my government that my taxes go to involved with a marketing campaign? Well, that's, that's probably a two, two point response, Jack. Um, I'm not sure who's paying for the marketing campaign that you're describing. You're retiring soon. Yeah, so no, I, I, I can say anything, right? I got you know, talk and run. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly you know, where the finances come from, whether yeah. it's the private sector or the government. But the FDA does have an obligation to educate folks. Part of what City uh, City Scope is all about is is getting a message out to your viewers. Yeah. Um, and. This, I don't get charged. You don't get charged for me being here or anything like that. Uh, so we have that responsibility to get our message out, you know, one way or the other. And once again, I don't know um, 
when it pops up on the label on uh, on a prescription, you know, get your flu shot. I've not seen that. I mean, you go pick up your prescription. You're asking. Her. My wife has been calling me nonstop, and I get. <laughs> oh, she got, oh. Um, get some milk for the dog. Um, but I'm gonna leave. I gotta go get this call. It's like the tenth time. Oh gee. It's still not too late to get your flu. It shot. isn't. Just remember that. It's still not oh, too boy. late. And here we go. Thirty-three percent effective. I have to. Th leave Thirty-six. Thirty-six okay. percent. <laughs> and I want to say also what we were talking about before in regards to pets. Do your research on your nutrition for your fish as well. You know I'm a big fish person. Please do your research on what they need. Please. So Joe, I guess it's just you and me. Yeah, who changed Jack that. away? I can't believe so, that. All right. It's horrible. That's okay. No, he's got to do what he's got to do. Yeah. But uh, thanks so much for coming in. I always enjoy and, it. You know that. You know, sharing all of your information right. with us. Right. It's always uh, informative and educational. <laughs> and emotional <laughs> so, sometimes. Yeah, but that's okay. Um, so, anyways, everybody, we got to wrap it up. This has been City Scope, and uh, we will see you guys next time.